Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and in this video I'm having a look at a very interesting metallic paper. Now the actual paper is Hannemuller one, it's a Hannemuller photo rag metallic 340 grams. So it's 340 grams, so quite stiff, and that does flatten out well. This is off a roll that I've got in this. This is the P5300. Uh, this has the same ink set as the Epson P900, P700. Uh, it's a P5370 in the States. Um, it's new printer that I'm currently testing. But about this paper, metallic. What does metallic really mean in papers? Well, almost anything you want from a marketing point of view. Um, I've seen some papers with a sort of distinct sort of pinkish luminescent tinge to them. Um, there's an ultra glossy metallic paper that I've tested for dye inks that looks absolutely superb. It would be my choice, doesn't look what I would call metallic at all. It would be my choice for making impactful prints that you could hand out as portfolio examples. It's a dye based printer, so I've, I've tested that elsewhere. But this one, the Hannah Miller one, this has been around a couple of years now, it's fascinating. It really is, has a metallic sheen to it. Now, I'm going to try and cut in some video clips and examples of some of these prints here to try and give you a feel for what it looks like. That's difficult. Obviously, on a video, it's very difficult, resolution and whatever. But I'll try and see what I can manage to make something that looks quite reasonable. Now, Here's a test print that uh, I turn around, and this is a 17 inch roll I've got here. It's available in sheets as well. And this is my black and white test image. Now, black and white test image, mm, looks fine. Um, it's not very bright. And when I actually did some measurements of this, now come on to color in a moment, but black and white was where I first thought I might have an interest for this paper. The paper white is quite dull. It's a little warm, but it's quite dull. So this is nowhere near as bright as most papers you'll see. It's partly because of the sheen and the way it reflects light. The blacks are fairly good. It's up to a good brighter type paper. Um, they're fairly neutral. I don't see any problems with that. It works very well. So I've got all of that set up nicely. Um, I took some measurements here to work out the density and a few other aspects of this paper. And yep, that's okay. Now, interestingly enough, this paper is the only paper I've tested on this, the Epson P5300, and that, that will go for the 900, 700 as well, where prints, black and white prints, and color prints to lesser extent, but black and white looks better using the 5760 black enhanced to overcoat, or BEO uh, mode. If you use the highest quality modes on this, not quite the absolute highest quality, but if you use the highest higher quality mode on this, you get better neutrality, you get a slightly darker black on it, linearity is fine using the ABW print mode on this, and it, I can print it as is. But as I said, the whiteness of this is not that great. So you have to be very careful as to what sorts of images work. Now, I've got some samples here and I'll show some that work and one that doesn't work and why I think it doesn't work. That was the black and white. The color, here's the profiling target. Um, you can see the metallic sheen. Um, it has a distinct metallic feel to it. Uh, depends very much on the ambient lighting. Uh, if you look at this in a flat outdoor daylight, you don't get the same impression. It's because as you move, the sheen changes on it. Colors, well, in terms of gamut, it's a, a much reduced, let's say much reduced, it's a reduced gamut compared to a normal Baraita finish. It's a gamut more on a par with um, a matte art paper 
than it is, although you profile this using the Premium Luster uh, PLPP 260 setting. Uh, I did up the vacuum a little bit because it's a thickish paper. If you're going to be using the paper a lot, I'd suggest making a custom media setting where you could set the uh, platen height and all the various adjustments and things to optimize it for this. But you profile it as a luster paper, as PLPP 260. So there we got, there's that. Now I made profiles, looked at the profiles. Yeah, it's, um, there's nothing unusual about it. It's just not that wide a gamut. But I think you're not going to look at printing wide gamut colorful images on this. Now, all the color images I've tried printing have been fine. There've been no issues with printing it from the gamut. But it's worth remembering that you've got the color gamut of a basic matte paper, but you've got the blacks of a baryta or not quite as a luster or gloss paper, but you've got good blacks because you're using the photo black on it. That means the characteristics will be different to what you're used to. And you may well have to edit your images somewhat compared to other media that you've printed them on. So anyway, let's have a look at some examples. Now, this particular shot, this is on the Suffolk coast. These are the reed beds at Snape. And this is a classic Suffolk coastal scene. Now I'm gonna have a look here, just try and make sure I don't get too much reflection off it, but the reflection is part of, uh, you know, the, of the charm of the image. Um, this particular one, I've printed this before um, on a Baraita paper, and it worked quite reasonably. The bit that works the very best on this are the reeds are the detail in the reeds and the gloss and the shine on the paper really makes them stand out. Um, the sky, well, it's a, it's a stormy day. Um, there is no bright whites here. There is a little bit, a uh, bit of sky, blue sky poking through. But the overall look of the uh, silvery effect of that works well with these clouds. The golden colour of the reed beds here, that's what really makes this one. Now, this one works very nicely. And I thought, oh, I've got this. This this will do for some of my coastal shots. And I thought, well, I'll try another coastal shot. Now, that one there is the reed beds. Now, let's go to actually on a beach somewhere. Now, this picture, this sums up one of the... I'll once again, try and move it around so it doesn't make too much in the way of reflection there. There we go. Um, now this one with the grayness of the sky, it's once again, it's a classic look over the North Sea. But to me, it doesn't quite work. And why is that? It's not the color, it's not. It's the lack of local contrast. Um, so this one might work if I improved the local contrast in the water here and a few other areas. It just doesn't quite work. Um, now, I obviously, you know, because I've got a roll of this paper to test, I can be quite generous in my testing. I would not normally suggest making test prints this size on a paper that's not cheap. But it is good because it confirmed what I thought about the paper, about what elements make for a good print. It needs more sharpening, but it needs sharpening and local contrast as well. I don't know whether this one actually will work. And you have to accept with a paper like this, there are going to be lots of images, potentially great images that you love, that you think look great, that just don't work very well on it. But anyway, that's one that doesn't work. As I said, this one, You'll see there's more contrast in the sky anyway. But what really makes this one are these reeds. And it's the contrast of the reeds against the background and the way they show up on it. That's what really works on that one. So that's another print looked at. Let's have a look at something else. Now this one, now this one I printed because Karen wants uh, uh, this framing up and putting out in our conservatory. Um, these orchids, now I took this particular photo when I was testing a macro lens, lower macro lens a, f a year or two ago. And it's not stacked or anything like that. 
it's just a close-up picture. Now the colours, the delicate colours of the orchids work very well. There's enough detail in it, sharp bits in it, and there's a softness to the back that works with it as well. And you've got a nice, solid, dense black. That looks very nice. It's a, it's a very pretty print of a flower, and it's one that Karen likes. So it's gonna be framed and it's gonna go in the house. Now, would I change anything on this if I was editing this specifically for this paper? Um, probably not. I might go over it again and one or two areas, I mean, and there's some excellent sharp bits in this and the detail in the flowers. I might once again just bump up local contrast a little bit. No, I want to be careful I don't create halos or anything like that, but I think I need a bit more sharpening. However, that doesn't really matter because the client has spoken and the client likes it and the client wants it framing. So there you go. I always remember that, that when you think, oh, I think I could tweak this a little bit more or something like that, that what you think sometimes really doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that one. That's good. Now, the last one, and this is a print that, this is a picture that if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll have seen examples of. These are the steps leading up to the chapter house at Wells Cathedral. Now this particular example, I just had a feeling that it would work, this metallic look would work for the polished stone here. These steps are worn, there are polished bits of stone in this as well, but I have to say I'm really pleased with it, it works well. Um, to the extent I might do a few of these, I've, I've had several people ask me about uh, do I sell print? Yes, I do sell prints, but um, I think I might well do a set of these whilst I've got this paper here. And um, yeah, a true sort of limited edition. And we'll see what comes of that. Now, it happens that I've also got to have a look at some art uh, editions related stuff anyway. So this is quite convenient for that. Now, the sheen, it works a treat. Uh, once again, let's just hold it up. Now, as to how, there we go. Hopefully be in focus, you'll be able to see it. That works really well. It's slightly warm, the whites on it, so that's okay because I prefer warmer papers for stonework like this. So yes, it's a nice picture. Um, I know it's a nice picture, it's one I like anyway. Um, it's inspired by the shop of F.H. Uh, Evans and it's a well-known architectural shot, although his is only this because he didn't have a 17 millimeter shift lens. Um, yeah, that's one that works with it. So how to deal with a paper like this? Well, first of all, accept that some images will work, some won't except that it's very much a matter of taste, what works, what doesn't work. Um, I've got a profile created for this that works. The ABW mode works fine on it for black and white. Um, yeah, it's an interesting paper. This is about as much as I like the paper barging into the presence of the, of the image. Um, but remember, as I said with the f a picture of the flowers, it's what the client likes. If you've got images that work with this paper, go for it. Um, obviously, some smaller sample images for testing ideas and things would be far better. But um, anyway, if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, I will include some of the technical data from this in the main review for this, the written review for this printer, which is going to be done in the next few weeks or so. Um, and that you'll be able to have a look at the charts and various things and hopefully a few more details of the pictures and stuff. Stuff that I simply cannot cover in videos very easily. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you found it interesting and uh, bye.